All right, Stan, you wrote you wrote to me about a belief. That's the way you phrased it. A belief you would like to get some relief on. For lack of a better term, I'm going to call it a family belief. Does that fit? Okay. Well, the reason I say family belief is that you have some concerns about your family not responding well to various beliefs and conducts and so on that are important to you in your life. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. Now, by background, if I remember our previous conversations, your your family hails from Russia. You are in the United States. They are also now in the United States. Yes. Yes. In the same city as you. Yes. Okay. But they came from Russia. Yeah. So I'm perceiving they have, they brought with them Russian beliefs. Uh, uh, that's my term. <laughs> am, I, am I on target there? Yes. Yes. Okay. Were you born and raised in Russia? Uh, up to age 10 and from age 10, I moved to Israel and age 21. I we migrated to US. Okay, so you you as well were were uh, influenced by whatever cultural beliefs the Russian community would hand their people. Yes. Okay. However, you come to the United States. It has a little different culture. There's more. Freedom here. I've never been in Russia. Okay, but there's more freedom here. Russia, Russia, communist, socialist. The government really has has told you what you're supposed to believe and this kind of thing. Correct? Um. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. At least much more restrictive than it is here in the United States. Yes. Sir. Yes. Okay. So one of your concerns is one of. Your, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say it my way, but then you correct me, okay? Because I won't, uh -huh. it's got to come from you rather than me. But just from a summary point of view, it's like you want to conduct your life here in the United States with freer beliefs, that's my term, <laughs> than what your Russian conditioned parents find acceptable. <laughs> How'd I do? It's right. It's right what you're saying. Well, say it, say it, say it in your words. So let me start from the beginning. What happened is um, we lived in the, in the, away from capital, away from Moscow, right? So it's much more smaller community in a way, close to Pakistan. So the um, spiritual thing was kind of okay, but not very open. And if my mama says she used to, she used to play over too. She used to be like, maybe it's, let's say a witch. Well, I, 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 I didn't hear that. She used to what? Say it again. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, she was playing of a witchcraft. Witchcraft. And something happens. If, if I remember it correctly, she got sick or ill because of it. But it, it's not about that. What happened is right now, today days when they are, me and my wife are practicing uh, energy healing, but when they bring it to, when they're talking to uh, well, my parents. I, I, I'm sorry, the, the internet connection isn't all that good. You are practicing, you and your wife are practicing. Uh, energy healing. Energy healing. Okay, good. Indeed. Right. Uh -huh. But when they're talking to my parents about it, especially when I'm talking to my mother, she's taking, she, she's very uh, afraid. She's afraid because of her witchcraft experience. I'm assuming, yeah, and 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 yes, yes. All right. So let's go back to your mother's experience, just so I understand well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So your mother somehow or other got involved with witchcraft and then became ill. Mm -hmm. And do I hear correctly? She's concluded somehow that because she was involved with this witchcraft form of healing 
that that's what made her ill. Yes. Okay. What is that belief based on? Her belief? On what? Uh, what do you mean? What is this belief based on? I, I believe it's a perception she assumed because she did what she did. It's caused her to be sick. Okay. Okay. Um, is that like... Do you believe that because she did some witchcraft things that all of that made her ill? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yes. Uh, to a degree, I believe, yes. I mean, okay. she's still alive. She's still yeah. normal. She's still functional. So whatever she had is not like major. But the so, way she told it... Go ahead. It probably freaked me out. It's, the way she told it as a young age kid, it's probably freaked me out. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Okay. Well, okay. As an American who has never been to Russia, um, I have a hard time. This is my belief system. Okay. <laughs> I have a hard time believing that because somebody practices some kind of healing technique, be it energy healing or witchcraft or whatever label you give it, mm -hmm. that that practice in and of itself all of a sudden makes them sick. All right. Okay. Well, I'm not saying, no, that's just not my belief system, but that's, that's okay. That's okay. okay. We're dealing with people's belief systems here, uh, namely yours, because somehow or other your mother's beliefs, her concerns about this and about what you do in your world is going to affect you, her little boy. Right, right. Yes. Now, when you say your family before is it only your, is it your family or is it your mother? Uh, only my mother. Only your mother? Yes. Okay, your father, other members of your family, if you want to practice energy healing or do something else in America, which is contrary to Russian cultures and beliefs, that's okay? Uh, my father kind of stays away. He didn't, he's not he's not expressing himself about this matter. Even though he, he, he used to heal his father from his pain, uh, but some reason with time, he just let it be. He's not practicing it anymore. Okay. Well, here's what you wrote. Here's what you wrote to me. Okay. Yes. The fear that mom, dad, and friends may see me strange will stop loving me accept me, look at me as an abnormal person, or be scared of me. Now, he, here you're talking about your, not just your family, but your, your mom, but your mom, your dad, and your friends. So is it just your mom, or are we expanding no. elsewhere? No, <laughs> we're expanding. We have colleagues at work. It's like, even though I want to share it, even I want to practice on them, but... Uh, but not everyone is open to it. Okay, so you want to practice energy healing. Yeah. On them, and they're going, mm. Yes. And they're looking at you like, you're weird. Where, where, <laughs> where is your Russian conditioning? No, where's your logic in the way? It's not even Russian conditioning. It's like, it's like everyday conditioning, every other personal conditioning kind of thing. Every what? Every any other person conditioning. I mean, I was in the same conditioning before I start working your your techniques. I was thinking the same way they thinking, but now I'm trying to introduce what you teaching. But they're thinking something something happening, something wrong with me. Well, you, you you make an interesting point because what I am teaching is not only outside of the thinking process of many Americans, by the way. So many Americans have a little problem you know, with what we're, what we're doing. However, we start getting results and they tend to start shifting their perceptions in it, okay? Yes. So that's even a problem in, for people that are culturally American, but it's more of a problem who come culturally from another culture altogether, namely, namely the Russian culture. Mm -hmm. Okay, that would be true in Pakistan as well. Okay, that would be true in many cultures around the world as well. But we're using Russian for the moment. So if I get it, see, I see, I, I, I've got to get the issue correct before we can move forward. All right. So, 
So I'm going to state it back to you now. You want to do energy healing and the, the kind of work that I do with optimal EFT. And you're, you're a member of our advanced course and so on. Okay. So you're seeing results and you're seeing reasons why it would be useful for them. Yes. I, I'm right so far. Yes. 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 So you try it <laughs> and it, it blows their belief circuits about what is, what you should be doing because they're, it blows, I'm going to say it blows their Russian belief circuits. Did yeah. I say it right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. So this is not to criticize. Everybody ends up, I mean, they're young, you know, they get some, they live in a culture, they're given beliefs, you know, they buy them. Sometimes they unbuy them later on or whatever. Okay. But that's what they're given. That's the truth to them and you start violating that truth and they have some re resistance to that. Okay. But if I hear it right, yes, that resistance, but your concern about it is that they will stop loving you. They won't accept you. They'll look at you as an abnormal person and be a be scared of you, all right? Yes. All right. So I'm seeing this, and again, correct me if you don't. I, I'm going to make some assumptions here because I don't know everything about you in your life, Stan. So if I make okay. assumptions that aren't correct, you need to correct me, or we're going to be walking down some avenue that isn't as fruitful as it could be. Okay. So it's not so much their beliefs, it's what's the it's it's what those beliefs mean to you. They are scared of you. They won't love you. It means you will lose love, you will lose acceptance. And they will literally be afraid of you. Did I say it right? Yes. Yes. Their beliefs Always correct me now. Their beliefs are their beliefs. I don't think I'm going to sit here and wave my hand and say their beliefs have to change. Okay. I don't think you're going to do that either, are you? Right. No, no. Now, they can shift over time as they get new input and so on. But well ingrained cultural beliefs, or for that matter, just simply family beliefs, even if you're in America different families have different beliefs, you know, get, get embedded. It is the truth. It is. That's how we conduct our lives. Don't mess with my beliefs. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. So the issue, and I don't want to impose this. I'm going to get, I'm going to say it to you and get your reflection. The issue isn't really their beliefs. It's your response to their beliefs. You are afraid they will stop loving you. You are afraid they'll be afraid of you. They won't accept you and so on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Would you say it in any other way? My, there's a... <laughs> You're right what you're saying, but now what I'm thinking about this kind of conflict, I want to help them because I see if I have an issue. Uh, some have anxieties and stuff like that. Uh, but then I'm thinking, if I'm not open for help, why should I help them? But then another side of me says, I would love to help them, but I'm not yeah. open to receive it. Yeah, okay. Well, see, see, I have, I have the same issue that you have, in a way. Let me describe what this is, and then we can. See, we really need to get down to what's really, really, really the issue before we can resolve it. Okay. But I see, I have, I have the same issue. Um, because our process isn't mainstream, it isn't taught in the medical schools, for example, and it's, you don't find it in the psychology books or psychiatry books anywhere and so on. Um, when it's first introduced to some people, not everybody, but some people, um, 
It's too weird. It's too strange. It's outside of their belief system. And so my problem now, if I'm going to deliver this to them, and they do have their anxiety and they do have their headaches and they do have their various issues that they want help with and need help with. My problem now is how am I going to deliver this to them? It's a re- it's sort of a rapport issue. How am I going to deliver this to them where they will accept it and not think I'm some stupid idiot who's trying to throw, <laughs> do something for them that couldn't possibly work? Now, am I paralleling what you're talking about? Yes. 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 The only difference is uh, these aren't necessarily my family. Okay. Um, but let, let me ask you, let me ask you. Your family, they already know what you do, I guess, because you, 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 you've tried to use it for them, okay? Yes. Do they not love you? No, they still accept me. Okay, uh, well. They still, still love me, yeah, yeah. they still love me. If you keep doing it, are they going to, in, in reality, stop loving you? No. Okay, well, that's what you wrote, so I, I had to get back to it well, may I, I get that it may seem that way i just want to help my mother more than my father because she has uh, more anxiety than, than yeah. any okay but yes. i i just need to be more specific here you may be concerned that they would stop loving you or not love you as much or love you differently or mm-hmm. think you strange But you're not telling me, I mean, the words, the words I'm reading in, in what you wrote to me are different than what we're talking about. They're not really going to stop loving you. They're not really going to stop accepting you. They may not accept what you're doing. Yes. And they may look at you as a weirdo, an abnormal person, you say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they may look at you and say, well, you're just in the wrong place. Okay. You're just confused or something like that. Are they really afraid of you? No, we just, I mean, they accept me for what I'm doing. We don't mind. We're not afraid of me. Okay. <laughs> so I get, I get that it seems that way. Or you wouldn't have written this. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then I need to be. You say here, my, my parents' constant reinforcement that I need to be logical, whatever that means. Okay, logical. Their lo- their lo- their logic, by the way. I need to be. You need to comply with their logic. Yes. Am I saying it right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. And follow society-made rules. Mm-hmm. Now, are they speaking of the Russian society or the American society or some other society? Uh, right now, it's going to be U.S. society. Like oh. main, main, mainstream society. Oh, okay. So in that sense, I don't follow mainstream society. Yeah. And because you're following along with what I teach, <laughs> you don't either, right? Right. All right. Am I hearing correctly? Am I hearing correctly that the real issue here is... Um, a conflict you feel when you're trying to help them with a with a process that they're not ready to buy yet. Yes, yes. It is that conflict. Yeah. It is that conflict. Indeed, yeah. And that that conflict has the potential of diluting family ties, love, acceptance, and things like that. They may think you're you're weird. They still love you. You're my brother. You're my son. You're my whatever. Okay, but you're a little weird, you know, Stan. <laughs> I accept it, but then you say diluting. I mean, if you're gonna impose on them, yes, it's gonna dilute this uh, time that we have together. Um, but if I'm not imposing uh, my belief on them, 
uh, it shouldn't change my okay. uh, relationship. Well, could this be as simple as you finding a way to introduce this to them so that they'll find it acceptable or go along with you for now or something like that? Not likely. I could. <laughs> I think well, I'm go for it. Well, let me ask you this. You are telling me that your mother has um, more anxiety than maybe other members of your family and friends. So if your mother, if, if we introduce this in a way to, to your mother, so they said, well, I'm willing to try it. Well, okay, you know, kind of thing. So it, it would be so, a, a softer introduction, okay? Not an imposition. And she actually felt less anxiety, at least temporarily. What do you think her response would be? Gee, maybe there's something to this that I don't understand, or would it be, oh, no, it can't possibly be. I mean, what might she say? In a way, my brain is contradicting you, but you're right what you're saying. She's probably going to accept it and try it more often. Well, to, to me, there's, there's no greater introduction to all of this than for have somebody get a result. Mm -hmm. Now, when you've tried in the past, for example, with your mother, have you actually done it with her? No, I was actually talking to her about it, and she was not willing to even try. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, tell me, tell me how you introduced her. What did you, as far as you remember, what did you say to her? Can you remember? Even basic, like my wife does Ricky, and I said, we can do Ricky on you. You'll feel much more calmer. She said, uh, she, either she said, I'm afraid, or she said, I'm not interested, at least at the moment. And we left it at that. And I was telling her, I was working on my sister and how well it's helped her, but I said, we can meditate together. I call it meditation. And she said, even though she does meditation by herself, as she said, I, I have no time for it. Okay. Well, what I'm hearing in there, and I don't know your mother. Okay. What I'm hearing in there is I, I am um, so involved with my own cultural beliefs. I really don't want anybody to intrude on them. Yes. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I'm thinking of several possible i want to do a little something with unseen therapists here too with you before we're done but but uh i want to cover some other stuff as well all right um a possible thing to do i mean you've already said well my sister your daughter right uh got some results okay did you just say she got some results or did you have your sister talk to your mother about the results did you talk much? What kind of results were they? Uh, she had a conflict in the family, and uh, we just uh, looked at some of our, our childhood problems, and the conflict at the family just got lighter. But I didn't, I didn't specify what exactly was happening because it's my sister's personal, personal life. So, okay. so that just it's helpful. All right. Okay. Well, so and so you didn't have permission really to to do all of that. Okay. All right. Another thing you could do is say, well, take a look at this mom, and then go to our website, print some stuff out. If you want, we've have our impossible healings. Mm -hmm. We have a whole results section. Some of which is in on anxiety. I have a recent um, member that I've worked with Big time anxiety. I mean, agoraphobia, panic attacks. I mean, anxiety squared. I mean, big time. All right. Gotten great results and has written just remarkable. In fact, either this last newsletter or a recent one or one coming up, you'll see his name is Andre. You can show her that and show her other things involved. 
like like when you go to the impossible healings and other results, you, uh, some of them will be on anxiety. Okay, but there, uh, your mother has other issues, I would presume, than just anxiety. She has yes. a physical thing here and a pain there and or whatever. Start showing her some of these things. All right. Do you think that would assist? Would she look? Would she not? It will. It will assist. Yeah. I didn't think about it, but it's a great idea. Yeah. All right. But even that, I'm guessing, I don't know your mother, okay? But even that, I'm guessing that you need some kind of a smooth, soft introduction to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like, Mom, I, I'd really like to... Yeah, I, I, I'm going to make this up, okay? This is what comes to me, okay? Mom, I remember when I was a child how sometimes you would sit me down and you would tell me some things. Or I would be listening at the dinner table as you would talk about some things. and They were new to me or you were helping me with my schoolwork or, you know, counseling me in some way. And that really felt nice. Now, uh, uh, am I in the ballpark there? These things happened with you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, here's, it, I'm not imposing this. This is a way to go about it. Remember mom when we did that. And I felt, oh, da, da, da. I'm asking you now, gee, could you listen to me that way? I've had some experiences you haven't had. All right. Or some other way to do that, okay? Uh, uh, but soft. Start with something you've done before that she recognizes. Soft, here we are. And then you can start showing her some of these things. And you know, Mom, it wouldn't take very long. Maybe 15 minutes, something like that. It worked for my sister, your daughter. Why not try it? Okay, now... I'm not there with your mother. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I don't know if that would work or not, but I'm giving you ways to ease into it. Mm -hmm. Can you think of any, I mean, th that may not fit because I just don't know all the circumstances, but how might you do that? How might, what would you do? Can you think of something? I think this approach from a distance, from far, like from childhood, I think it's going to, softer up it, it will make her to relax she's not going to be on defensive we're going to go straight let's try it instead of approaching your way she'll be much more open in my opinion yeah yeah you got to kind of just ease <laughs> into it I, yes. I know that from experience because if, if i have a client for sometimes since, since what we're doing is spiritually based there are occasions where i I have a client who just doesn't have any spiritual belief whatsoever, maybe even an atheist. Okay. And for me to say, now sit down and we're going to do the unseen therapist and, uh, you know, uh, God's going to fix you. <laughs> Does not work. <laughs> okay. I might as well not even start. Okay. It's a matter of easing into it, easing into it. Now, I want to ask you this, Stan. The thought about sitting there and easing into this. Do you feel some discomfort in even trying that? No, I do not. Oh, you don't? No. Okay. The reason I even ask that is because when there's a, a difference in cultural beliefs. I mean, you started with the Russian cultural belief, but you're more into America now. And so some of those cultural beliefs are starting to shift into other things and so on, much more so than your parents. I have that right? Yes. Okay. Parents and family and friends and so on. Okay. Um, so that in, in order, in order to bring this to their attention better, it helps the more conviction you have in, I'll put it this way, the more conviction you have in it, the easier it's going to be to make this soft transition. Does that seem right? 
yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I misspoke. I have a little bit of anxiety about it. Uh, when you ask me if I have some, okay, uh, yeah, All right. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, okay. So it's that it's that anxiety then, or that conviction, and and so on, that I would like to address with unseen therapists. Mm-hmm. All right. Because your, your mental set, as you approach this, if you're all anxious about it, you're going to radiate that. She's going to pick that up. She, she's going to figure out, you don't really believe this as much as you think you do kind of thing, right? Yes, yes. Right, okay. So let's get a start on it. We'll do an unseen therapist session. It's re- being recorded, and you can, you can uh, play it again and again and again, if you wish, to help cement this more and more and more because i think once you start doing this and once you start getting a tangible result with your mother father or whoever wants to Mm -hmm. results speak results speak Mm -hmm. in fact one of the things i was thinking of this is just an aside for now before we do unseen therapists is you could you could say you know when i was first addressing first trying to learn about that i had heard all these good things now i'm making this up as though i'm you okay i i'd read some stuff and heard some stuff and you know i had to say to myself you know i i don't know if i really believe this this isn't in my belief system it's not in my cultural conditioning but i got very persuaded by all the results people were getting. And so I used it on myself and I used it on a few clients. And, it, you know, so just because I don't, haven't believed it before, it doesn't mean it's wrong. But that's how I got into it. And now I start to get lots of good results and da, 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 da. Okay. Now that's recorded for you as well. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Do whatever version of that fits for you. But, but to tell her where you're coming from, see, the whole purpose of that, you're telling her where you're coming from. You didn't believe it either. That's where she is. Okay. You didn't believe it either. Really? You were open to it. You mm-hmm. read about it. Huh? <laughs> but then we started to get results. Small results at first. You can say it that way. Because you don't know what kind of result you're going to get with your mother. It may be small and temporary to begin with. Okay. Yes. yes. Small results at first, but then a little more and a little more. And da, da, da. And read this, mom. This is look at all these impossible healings. And da, da. these are people talking about what's really happened. And go yeah. from there. Okay. All right. All right. Just another possible entree. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Now, I, before we start with unseen therapists, I want to I want to introduce a metaphor to you, uh, um, which I think would show up in our unseen therapist session and that's the metaphor of a prison all of us myself included with our own belief systems etc create our own little prisons okay it's got things you can do and not do and should and shouldn't do and must do and must not do (laughs) and all and all of that in it and of course as life goes on and we start to shift our beliefs why these things Shift a little bit, okay. But it's the prison idea, and we need to walk out of our prisons. Is that a useful? Yes, it is. Okay, good. All right, so let's just bring an unseen therapist here for a moment, and, and, and we'll just go where this takes us, and we'll just see what happens, okay. Oh, one thing first, I'm sorry. You said a moment ago, you had some kind of anxiety. You just you misspoke. You do have some anxiety about approaching this with your mother. Mm-hmm. Close your eyes for me and imagine even a, either, either a past effort at this or what you anticipate a future effort to be. And give me some sense on a zero to 10 level of what your anxiety is now about the possibility of bringing this up to your mom. Uh, about five or six. All right. Are there any uh, are there any physical sensations with that tightness someplace or something? Yeah, I feel it in the throat and a little bit in the chest. 
Is that a tightness or something else? Uh, restriction. Restriction in my throat. Uh, some discomfort. Well, restriction in my throat. The discomfort kind of dissipated. Okay. But something in the chest as well? No, it's gone. Well, it was there a minute ago. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, was that a restriction or constriction or? or... Uh, no, it was some uh, discomfort. Uh, some. It's like uh, like uh, some ball. Felt like a ball. Something. Uh... Yeah. Let's say it's constriction. Okay. All right. All right. That's just a, sort of a, a, be, a beginner look at where we start from. All right. All right. So close your eyes. Close your eyes. And uh, take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. And you've done this before, Stan, being one of our one of our students. You know, so just recall a loving moment. It's a way of inviting unseen therapists. Uh, just and when you recall it, just nod your head. All right, good. And for anybody listening in who isn't who isn't um, familiar with this yet. This is just a simple way of letting unseen therapists know we're listening. <laughs> you know, she's always guiding us and always talking and oh, we're just not listening because our ego is doing too much stuff and uh, all of that. So we're just aligning ourselves with a simple little loving memory, aligning ourselves with her more advanced, pure, healing love. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, with Unseen Therapist on board, and we're going to give her a little something to work on. And so let's, in your imagination, stand, imagine yourself sitting in a uh, prison. Right? Prison has four walls. Three of those walls are solid walls. The fourth wall is the wall with the bars on it. But the door has been unlocked. The door is open. Unseen therapist open the door. It's open. You can walk out of it anytime you want. <laughs> so there you are in the prison, sitting down. Unseen therapist is there with you. And you look at the solid walls and you see some Writing on the walls. And that writing reflects some beliefs. It reflects some fears. It reflects some conflicts, some things that keep you in this prison. You're not really free to express yourself because of the things that are written on this wall. And these things are written by your mother, actually. They're very well meant, very loving. They come from her belief system, her own cultural understanding and everything else. And she writes them there for you to see they're on your walls, okay? But they're also on her wall. She wrote them there. If you would, take a look at those walls and give me a phrase. There may be many phrases written on the walls, but give me a phrase that your mother would have written on those walls regarding her resistance to your bringing this healing technique to her benefit. What might it say in English? Not good enough. Who is not good enough? I'm not good enough. You're not good enough. Yes. You're, not, you're not good enough to really do, even with, with this weird thing, you're not good enough to fix me. It, 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 am I restating it correctly? Yes. Okay. Something else that you find on the walls? No, it's actually pretty strong. Say it again. It's pretty strong. It's nothing else. I mean, it's oh, that it's one. All, all the space on, on the wall. All right. Oh, yeah. It took all three walls, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's get behind that then for the moment. You're not good enough. Is she also saying 
I don't trust you. Is that behind there someplace? Indeed, yeah. Okay, I'm going to make a note of that. Okay, now, is that really what she thinks or is, be careful with this one for a moment. Is that really what she thinks that you indeed are not good enough and she indeed does not trust you? Or is that what you think about yourself and that's why you hesitate? This is what I think about myself. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So let's see. That's good. That's good clarification. That's great. So there it is. It, it, it's throbbing at you. Not good enough. Not good enough. Not good enough. And don't even try it because you're not good enough yet. So I'm hearing unseen therapists speak for a minute. So let me start. <laughs> let me try to give you the words that I'm hearing. Um, the term not good enough is echoed in almost everybody. And one of the reasons for that is that the whole thing of being not good enough is a relative term. I don't care how good an athlete is. They may be a professional athlete. They may be the most famous athlete in their sport around. But even they will tell you there's more. They could do better still. Do you recognize that? Yes. The singer who sings the high note knows they can sing a higher note still. They just haven't done it yet. Would I be correct? Yeah. All right. And so on it goes. The lawyer who has had the great court record could always have a better one. He could, he could have looked back at all the court things he did, even though he won, and say, oh, I could have done it better. Would I be correct? Yes. yes. The architect who builds the building would look at the building and say, oh, but I wish I had done so-and-so. Would I be correct? Yes. All right. These are all forms of not good enough. In your case, you are learning the optimal EFT, the unseen therapist, and so on. Just like, Stan, I am learning it. Both of us, by that definition, are not good enough yet because we haven't achieved the absolute ultimate highest level. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Now I may be a somewhat higher level than you, but uh, you know, so on it go. That's how we learn. Okay. Now here, the unseen therapist say the way to really learn this is to go do it, step your toe and get, you get burnt <laughs> once in a while. Okay. <laughs> that is how <clears throat> you learn. She's saying that because the term not good enough needs to be softened. Everybody, including your mother, by the way, is not good enough. We all have our insecurities. All of our cultures, even the Russian one, I am presuming, wants you to achieve more and more and more. Does not the Russian culture, even though they may want to put some limits around your thinking, not also tell you that their Olympic athletes are really to be admired. I'm guessing that. Am I right? Yes, yes, you're right. Okay. So to achieve and achieve and achieve and achieve, it's a process. And everyone, by that measure, including Stan, is not, and Gary, is not good enough yet so it's on it's on written on the wall not good enough not, it's pulsing at you not good enough not good enough not good enough anxiety is in there okay here comes the throat constriction here comes the chest the ball of the chest the discomfort and all of that i'm also hearing unseen therapy it's like suppose stan that was gone you just simply recognized that you're in a process, you're learning something. Your mother is an opportunity for both her to get benefit and you to learn. But you're looking at it as a student in school trying to learn a new technique, a new something, a new topic 
in school. You, rec you recognize when you enter the classroom, you don't know yet everything. That's why you're there. Right. And you need to practice and all of that. So anyway, here comes, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not pulse, 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 pulse. And it creates this anxiety. So in your imagination, Stan, allow those pulsing words to lift off the wall and float in front of you. All of these pulse, not good enough, not good enough, not good enough. And in your imagination, float them off to unseen therapists who we will imagine as a loving, understanding, healing ball of light and love. And so let it just float off in there and watch it enter that transparent ball of light. And there you see it and they're going, pulse, pulse, not good enough, not good enough, not good enough, not good enough. And with unseen therapist understanding and all that love, it just can't keep doing that because there's something wrong with it. <laughs> it doesn't fit in ultimate love. It doesn't fit in the truth. And so you watch it. And it, it goes, not good enough, 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 not ah, not good enough. And you watch it fade. And in its place, you see a gentle smile of the unseen therapist it says, see, it need not be. That's a little poem. See, it need not be. Now let's do that again. There you are in the prison. Not good enough, pulsing from the walls, lifted off the walls. Floated off to unseen therapists. Not good enough, 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 not good enough. And then comes the poem, and I've forgotten the poem already. See, what was the rest of it? Do you remember it? No. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> oh, I remember. See, it need not be. See, it need not be. Now, in your own mind, Stan, repeat that. Take your time. Not good enough, not good enough from the walls floating out over, fading. See? With a smile. A gentle smile. It need not be. Do you have that a time or two or three or whatever it takes until you find it, until you've gotten as far as, as far as you think you can go for now. All right. And when you're done, just open your eyes and we'll, we'll talk. And by the way, there's no grade for this. There's no A or C or anything else. There just is what happens and we'll discuss that. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Okay. Were you able to follow along okay, or did you have a bunch of competing thoughts or what? Nothing. No, no, no. I was following along. You are following along. Okay. All right. Well, um, why don't you now, let's do a little testing. Um, close your eyes. Close your eyes. And, and uh, let's go back to this experience we were talking about where you were five or six before. You know, not good enough with your mother and so on. Get into it. Exaggerate it if you need, need to. I mean, just really get into it. Vividly visualize it. And tell me if you're still a five or six. Uh. Yeah. 
it's about three, but it's light. Three, it's not heavy. It's actually two. I don't know, maybe it's going down. Maybe it's still in the process of dissolving. Well, that happens a lot, but okay. Keep going. Keep telling me. Do you have a throat restriction? No. <clears throat> no, I don't feel... I don't have a throat restriction, but it's it was too. Now it's a light one. It's like it's dissolving. It's it's melting away. Oh, okay. Anything in the chest? No, no. I feel some some discomfort. What was here on the center now towards the shoulder, but even that is it's dissipating. All right. Okay. Well, open the eyes. Open the eyes. All right. So that's good news. That's good news. Uh, that means likely we're starting to lighten up. Remember, that's one reason we recorded this, because a lot of times your system needs to go do it a time or two or three. So you can go back and redo this. And you may think of other things, by the way, written on those walls. OK, mm -hmm. they may show up and, and you can just plug those in if you want to this and start yeah. lightening it. The whole purpose of that is when you do, you know, talk to your mother again. And by the way, you may not want to go to your mother right away. You may want to go to somebody easier like your sister and get more experience. Okay. okay. Um, and all that helps you by the time you get there to have, be more centered, be more centered, be more, the conviction uh, is there because she'll pick up your lack of conviction, your anxiety. She'll pick it up. People yes. do that. Okay. But the more conviction you have, the more she'll pick that up and, and so on. So now, I purposely talked about that to kind of distract you a little bit. I want to go back to testing again. Okay. So if you would close your eyes, and this time, when you go back to this memory, exact, you're literally trying to get yourself upset. I, please exaggerate the sights the sounds, the feelings, you're looking for what's not done yet. Exaggerate everything. Try to get upset and tell me what number you get to. Uh, I want to say something else. I mean, not good enough is kind of dissipated, but there's something else and I feel like it's a wall, so. All right, please. Uh, please, please what? Uh, what is it? Oh, uh, it feels like a wall. I cannot even put the, the emotion or, or what is it. Uh, it's like I feel the restriction in my chest, a little bit in the throat. And it's like I cannot pass it. <clears throat> it's like holding me back to see it. Is, it. is it a five or six or some other number? Oh, no, it's going to be eight. Oh, an eight? Yeah, but it's not, it's not good enough. It's something else then. I think that not good enough is actually dissipated. All right. Okay, see, now, that, this is really important. Really important because you're getting down. I'm thinking, okay, you're getting down to an even heavier resistance still. You're not even able to name it at this point. You're not be able to put words on the wall. So, am I right? Yes. Okay. But it's an eight. I, I, I gather the throat and the chest are more intense, and that's what's telling you it's an eight. Yeah. Okay. Do you feel tears coming about it? Or what kind of emotions do you feel about it? There's no tears. Uh, it's just black, let's say cloud or wall that does not let me, doesn't let me through, doesn't let me see or feel. Okay. All right. Now, I never know for sure what unseen therapist is doing in the background and so on, but I'm going to speculate for the moment, just for our discussion purposes. Uh, and this is based on my experience and so on, but there's some likelihood that she recognizes it's deep enough that you don't want to see it yet because it is painful, scary, or yes. Guilt, guilt ridden or something you don't want to face something or other like that. So she's being gentle enough 
not to throw it in your face. As if to say, you're not quite ready yet. Yes. Okay. Doesn't mean that's it's bad. Doesn't mean it's not resolvable. It means that for the moment, um, you know, we may have to soften a little bit, let a little time go by, maybe, okay, kind of thing. Um, so we'll represent it as a black cloud or wall, but letting you know that there's something bigger underneath. That's what I'm hearing. Does it seem to ring a bell? Yes. Yes, it does. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's spend a moment on that. We haven't identified it, and maybe we may or may not identify it today. Again, we're recording this, so you did, you repeat this these things. You may find it identified and more easy to identify, more easy to accept, and so on. And by the way, I'm getting somehow, I'm getting a nudge. I, I don't have specifics about it, but I'm getting a nudge that is some kind of a guilt-ridden issue, something you did and you'd like to re redo or so, something like that. There's some kind of a darkness about you. By the way, we all have that. There's not a person on the planet who would <laughs> like to go back and redo a whole bunch of stuff in their life, okay? But something like that, something even from childhood is sort of ringing. Something you may have even forgotten or repressed and don't want to look at or something, okay? That doesn't make it true. I'm just giving you this little feedback. It's, it may trigger something for you in time. But let's go back. Close your eyes. Let's go back to Unseen Therapist. Okay, we've already invited her, so we need not go through the, that process again. She's here. Let's sit in the prison again. And remember, the door is always wide open. You can walk out of it, out of it anytime you want. Okay. But now you're looking at the wall and this uh, not good enough thing just doesn't seem to be an impediment, at least as far as telling your mother or approaching your mother and so on. Yeah. But this, now this wall looks like a black cloud. It's an ominous black cloud. You don't know what it's about, but there's something not good about something scary about that, something we really don't want to look at. Maybe it's a guilt issue, as I talked about. Maybe there's something you have a big fear about something, and you don't even, your system is not even allowing you at the moment to identify it. It's just there. Okay? So it's a dark cloud, and it it's, it, it occupies the wall you're looking at, and it sort of floats back and forth, becomes the wall, and it's, it's almost like, like there's maybe thunder and lightning in it, and, but it's not the kind of a cloud you'd ever want to go into. But that's what we're going to do anyway, okay? So a little differently this time. There's unseen therapists right there with you. She puts her arms around you and says, this fear thing, this guilt thing, this dark cloud thing, whatever it may be. Is limiting you in many areas in your life, not just with approaching your mother on an energy healing, optimal EFT unseen therapist thing. Mm -hmm. It isn't limited to just that. But now this cloud now floats off the wall and there it is right in front of us. A few feet wide, a few feet high, a few feet deep. It almost growls at you. Unseen therapist then asks your permission. He says, Stan, I... As you know, I'm not really out there someplace. I'm within you. And I want to occupy my true place for the moment. Is it okay if I just blend within you for the moment? Is that okay? Yes. All right. So in your imagination, just let her blend in. And when you're looking out of your eyes, you're actually also looking out of 
her eyes and she doesn't see this cloud. She sees why you would be concerned about this cloud, ominous, dark thing. Okay. But she knows it's nothing but a cloud. It is a fiction. You have given the cloud all of its power over you. And so with her assurance, you walk towards the cloud, always with her, always with her guidance. And you notice as you approach the cloud, you can feel the soft, gentle, light mist of the cloud on your face. Oh, huh. this is just the beginning of the cloud. It's just, that's what clouds are like. They have this little mist. They are mists, right? but you feel that on your face. It doesn't feel quite so ominous. And so Unseen Therapist gives you another little nudge and you walk a little further into a few inches into it. Okay. You're starting to get into the, some of the dark part of it, but it doesn't really feel that bad. It's like, gee, if I only knew what this was, I could probably giggle at it. Maybe, maybe not. I could be lighter about it anyway. And so you go a little further into the cloud and it, there is no real danger here. It's just darkness and not understanding is what it is. I'm in the dark because I don't understand. There's no thunder anymore. There's no lightning. It's just sort of a darkness. And you look around inside the dark cloud and you look for extra, some extra dark, if they exist, you're looking for some extra dark places, other little balls, dark balls within the cloud. Just look around and tell me if you see one or two or three or something. Just tell me, tell me whatever you, none or some or what? No, I just see three or four. All right. Three. All right. You see three. Well, just in your imagination now with Unseen Therapist Self, just walk up to that one of them. Just pick one out. Just walk up to it. And if it had a label on it, what would it say? Uh, hate. Hate. Hate about somebody, about you, about somebody else? What? I just feel hate. I cannot, I maybe towards my mobile, maybe myself. I don't know. All right. All right. Well, see, that's the kind of thing that our systems don't really want to acknowledge. We don't want to acknowledge that our, we're even capable of hate or rage. These are things you read about someplace else. These are Stalinist things. These are Hitler things, maybe, uh, you know, to, to make the exaggerated versions of it. We all have these potentials. Uh -huh. You have it. I have it. Anybody listening to this has it. And if they don't think they do, they're not paying attention. Okay. Potentially, we have all of these things within us. So Unseen Therapist now says, okay. Great. We don't need to identify, maybe not ready to identify it yet. Right. But we have this hate. And maybe we can see how somehow or other, if we have hate within ourselves about a culture, about somebody else, about mother, about how you were raised, about the society you live in, the, the money you don't have, uh, whatever. Okay. All those things or some or something else. That's in the way if you are going to softly and lovingly present optimal EFT to your mother. Does that seem right? Yes. Okay. It's not a criticism. We're observing. This is what happens. So let's take this label of hate. And let's... Um, while Unseen Therapist is still within us, she can be in more than one place. So let's also put her 
outside as well into a, a loving ball. And let's take the hate and let's make it throb like we did it not good enough. Hate, 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 hate. And let's float it off inside the ball and watch the transparent loving light ball. Watch, watch it go, hate, hate, hate. And then maybe see the ball that says, ah, from above, now we have love. That's another little poem, okay? From above, now we have love. May seem too much at the time, but it's, not, it's a worthwhile exercise for you. So do that again in your imagination at a time or two or three or whatever. And whenever you're done, gone as far as you can go, just... Say something. Keep your eyes closed, but just say something. <clears throat> okay. All right. Now, you said there were like two or three balls. Do you recognize any of the other ones that maybe have something on there? I mean, walk up to one of the other balls and tell me if they have a label, what might it be? It's going to be rage. Rage. That's a cousin to hate, is it not? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's do the same thing. Let's do the same thing. Every, everybody has the potential for rage in them. In fact, rage is something that we might exhibit a little bit more. Sometimes we just blow our cork on something. <laughs> something happens and off we go, you know, and, and anybody who doesn't do that is probably <laughs> a setup for a major disease because they're <laughs> They're just not expressing themselves when they need to, okay? But rage, rage. We may not even know what it's about. Do you know what it's about yet? Uh, you know, when I'd be talking about hate, maybe I, I, I'm hating myself for not giving enough as a child to help my parents in a way. Okay. So maybe rage is also related to it. So, and you said not giving enough as a child to your parents? Yeah, yeah. Helping enough or listening enough. Mm. Well, <laughs> you just described every child on the planet, by the way. <laughs> Children are very self-centered. They're looking for, you know, how can I get through this world more than how can I help everybody else? Okay, That's, yes. that's something adults eventually get to sooner or later. But we'll put a little humorous thing around that but okay so we're going to call this rage this ball with this rage in it uh, we're going to call it erroneous rage not that we don't really have rage okay but we're going to call it childhood mistaken rage does that fit yes all right childhood mistaken rage and you're and you're you're <laughs> You're beating yourself up about it. That's a form of guilt, by the way, when you beat yourself up about not having childhood. What was the phrase? Childhood? Erroneous rage. Erroneous rage. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Okay. So there we are. Childhood's erroneous rage. And, and maybe you can even see a little, a little child, a little you going, yeah, okay. I'm not good enough. I'm not doing it well enough. Can you see that little Child? Yes. All right. We're going to take that little child, that little screaming, I didn't do it good enough. I Notice I'm changing the words, okay? I didn't do it good enough. To float over to Unseen Therapist, the light ball. And there's the child. Ah, I'm not going to do it right. I'm not going to. All right. Ah, da, 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 da. Ah, da, 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 da. Ah, da, da. And then this child smiles. The child finally understands. I'm just a child, you know, lighten up a little bit, all right? <laughs> and then unseen therapist says, be mild with the child. Another little poem, okay. So repeat that a time or two or three, and whenever you're done, just... Say so, and we'll continue. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Is there another ball? Another black ball? Actually, uh, no, no. It's it's. I put everything together. I think when it was rage, and when you said guilt, I did connect with guilt too. So I put them together. Yeah. Okay. And I floated to us in terms. All right. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Okay. The guilt thing, in my experience, is the kind of thing that everybody has. There's not a person on the planet wouldn't like to turn back their clock and redo some stuff. Every, me too. Everybody. Okay. And this world, this seemingly separated world, is designed to give us guilt. <laughs> I mean, it's really good at it. It's really very good at it. Um, but it's a fiction, actually. Um, but we need to get, get relief from that. Now, close your eyes again. Close your eyes again. There you are in the prison. Right? Remember, the door is open. It's always been open. Now, it's going to be really easy to say, oh, well, I think I'm, I'm ready to walk out the door now, Craig, because I feel free. In the, and that would be a nice thing, and it would, it would put a little ribbon or bow around it and all that stuff. But still, we're still looking for stuff not done yet. All right. So maybe you feel free enough to walk out the door. Maybe not. But just tell me, as you sit there, are you free enough to walk out the door? No. You're not. Okay, what's I'm, left? I'm too, com too comfortable in my cell. You're still comfortable in your cell? Too, too comfortable in my cell, yeah. Oh, okay. It's All like right. it's a fear to try something, uh, try what is going on outside. Yeah, okay. All right. And go ahead, open your eyes. Open your eyes. Okay. What we were attempting to do here, and I think we probably did a good part of this is to get a good start in all of this. Okay. To get a good start. Now you're still comfortable in the cell, meaning there's yeah. more to do, but I'm also hearing, I forgot the exact words you used a moment ago, but it's like, it's like approaching your mother with this healing technique may be the ultimate measure of how well you're doing with the rage, the hate, and the, all the other things that everybody carries around. Okay. That's the ultimate. It seems to me that way. It would be the ultimate measure of it. And the fact that you're not quite there yet isn't bad. That's the important part of all this. We want to do this thoroughly too many people try to do eft or other kind of things like this and they just get so far and they, oh yeah i did it all no no typically not typically not <laughs> okay but we can be thorough 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 so i've given you metaphors you can go back to them you can run them again plug other stuff into them other black balls and whatever yes Someday you, you may hopefully be free enough to walk out of the cell. Now, see, I'm, I'm about to go back and say something I said a little earlier. Um, it's good. To me, it's a good thing that you're, you're acknowledged. You're not ready yet to walk out of the cell. You're comfortable there. There are unresolved things. So that is good. That is really good. A lot of people say, no, I'm ready. I'm ready. See, and you fool yourself. You fool yourself. Yes. In one sense, you're never ready until you've got complete enlightenment. Right. Yeah, yeah. In the meantime, we approve. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, do this. Do this for me, if you would. Um, I'm looking at my notes for just a second. Go back to this scene where you were going to approach your mother with the healing and all of this, where you were at a five or six. Go back to that now. Exaggerate the sights, the sounds, the feelings, etc. 
and tell me what anxiety you get or intensity you get on a 10 point scale. Uh, it's not anxiety. I have no anxiety. Do you have, do you have a throat constriction or a chest ball or? No, no throat constriction. Uh, but chest ball got shifted slightly on a different side of a chest. Okay. Let's change it to something else. It's changed okay. something else. All right. That's a clue. This is unseen therapy is beautiful because she's now pointing things out to you. And in a good start session, you know, I have to leave this because you're one of our students, you know, to you have the tools to go do that, you know, to go start addressing all those things, you know. But but the fact that that one particular scenario where you were a five or six and stroke constriction, all, all that stuff doesn't seem to, that's a good sign. However, you'll want to go tomorrow morning. You'll want to go over it again, vividly, because you're looking for what's not done yet. Take notes and off you go. Right. Okay. Anything else you want to go over? Does that fit? It does fit. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let me know what happens. I will. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.